We are now on the 14th Sunday in ordinary, in ordinary time. And in today's gospel, the people of Christ's native place could not see how Jesus can have such amazing wisdom and perform mighty deeds. And because of their lack of faith, they closed themselves off to the wonderful works that Jesus could have done for them. But St. Paul, on the other hand, turns to Jesus in humility because of the thorn in his flesh, even boasting gladly of his weaknesses because he knows that it is in his weakness that God's power is known. In this Eucharist, therefore, we ask for the grace to find God's strength in our weaknesses. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick pe people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Japanese have an ancient form of art called kintsugi, which literally means golden patchwork. And I have flashed just a picture of the artwork. And it involves restoring broken pieces of pottery, such as cups, bowls, or plates, by joining them together using precious metals like silver, gold, or bronze as adhesive. Kintsugi is an art because instead of hiding the flaws of the pottery, the artist highlights the cracks by sealing them with precious metals. The results are beautiful works of art where brokenness is not hidden but showcased for all to see. An artist has even put it very beautifully. He says it is the art of precious scars. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, God's ways are very much like the art of Kintsugi. In His perfect plan, God has chosen to use broken people to do extraordinary things. And He has planned to use the pain and suffering of people for our good as the way for us to see His power and glory. In other words, in God's plan, weakness is the way. St. Paul was not a perfect person. In fact, no saint was ever a perfect person. They were all human beings who, just like us, had their fair share of problems, hardships, suffering, and temptation. They did not live worry-free lives. In fact, it was their very challenges and failings that God used to make them into saints. This is what St. Paul is trying to tell us in today's second reading, that I might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, 
a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Paul states for a fact that although God has given him extraordinary experiences and mystical revelations, God has also given him a thorn in the flesh, an angel of Satan to beat him. And Paul prayed repeatedly for God to remove this thorn. But what was God's response? He refused in order to keep him from getting too elated. Why would God give Paul a thorn in the flesh to keep him from being happy? Isn't happiness his desire for each one of us, we may ask? Why then does he want Paul not to be too elated? And this strange passage raises two questions. First, what is this thorn in the flesh? No one really knows, but scholars have many theories. It may have been a physical ailment of some kind or a particular temptation like lust or greed or the discouragement he constantly felt from being rejected by his fellow Jews. Or it may also have been his hot-temperedness, which always seemed to get him into trouble. But whatever it was, Paul confesses that it was a continual source of pain and irritation to him. But the second and more important question is this. Why didn't God take this thorn away from him? When he begged the Lord to take away this thorn in his flesh, the Lord himself says, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. And this gives Paul a fresh perspective in life. In fact, he writes, I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weakness, with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. I am content. Notice that Paul does it in, 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 some, in, in, in some translation. Paul isn't simply content. He says, as, he, he, does, is he, he isn't simply content as in, he says, Sige na lang, ano ba bang magagawa ko? I will just endure it na lang since I can't do anything about them anyway. In other translations, this line is translated as he is well content, well content with his weakness. And, 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 and in fact, he says, in, therefore, I rejoice in it. I embrace my weaknesses and I celebrate my weaknesses. In other words, St. Paul tells us that the thorn in the flesh is there to constantly remind him of his human weakness and therefore inspiring him to depend more fully on God's grace. And so, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today we are asked, we are invited to ask, what if the path of true to true power doesn't come through our trying harder, but by giving up the attempt to be powerful and self-sufficient? What if God's power could be shown through our lives in ways we never thought possible? Not by desperately trying harder than ever before to overcome our weaknesses, but by admitting them, then getting out of God's way and allow Him to show His power and glory through our weaknesses and our challenges. What if our weaknesses were the very means through which God had always intended to reveal His power? My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, only in Scripture are we encouraged to embrace our weaknesses and through them experience a power that we could never know, have known otherwise. 
This is why God didn't remove Paul's thorn in the flesh. This is why he perhaps will choose not to remove our weaknesses and the challenges we face in life. Strange as it sounds, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, embracing our weaknesses, embracing our brokenness is the Christian way of life. Our world tells us otherwise. Embrace your strengths, overcome your weaknesses. In scriptures, we are engaged, we are encouraged to do the opposite. Embrace our weaknesses and through them, experience a power that we may otherwise not have known. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made, per made perfect in your weakness, says the Lord. In our fallen and broken world, all of us have our own collection of natural weaknesses, and we sometimes are overwhelmed by the many challenges of life. We might be tempted to hate our vulnerabilities or deny our weaknesses, but today's second reading encourages the opposite attitude. Paul suggests that it's in our weaknesses that Christ is most likely to reveal his power. Jesus had told, had told him, my power is made perfect in your weakness. So Paul says, it is, it is when I am weak that I am strong. We may not like our imperfection and our brokenness, but hiding them only denies Jesus' power to work within those aspects in our lives. When we invite Jesus into our lives through our sinfulness, we gently, He gently mends and redeems us. He helps us to become better in ways that, in ways that we could not have ever imagined. And so I invite each of one, each one of us, to say this prayer silently in our hearts as we end our prayer. It is, and we pray for that we can be kintsugi, golden patchworks, precious cars, and beloved dust of the Lord. And so we pray, dear Lord, we beg of you to please give us strength when we are weak. Love when we feel forsaken. Courage when we are afraid. Wisdom when we are foolish. Comfort when we are alone. Hope when we feel rejected. And peace when we are in trouble. Help us remember that it is in all these weaknesses that we can come to experience not only your might and power, but more importantly, your great love and tender care for us that will make us whole in our brokenness. Amen. While I was preparing for this homily, I remembered this song of um, uh, Laura's story that goes, We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep, we pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. All the while, you hear each spoken need. But sometimes, we do not get what we pray for. And the last line says it, Yet love is way too much to give us less, lesser things. Because what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you are near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? That sometimes we do not get what we ask for because the Lord wants to give us greater things. And all we need is to allow the Lord to enter our lives through our weaknesses and our brokenness. And therefore, the invitation is for us, like Paul 
to embrace our weaknesses, no? To embrace them, to rejoice in them, and to be proud of them because these are the areas where the Lord will enter our life. That Christ enters our lives through our pain and our emptiness. He has, he feels, he feels, but it has to be empty. And he heals, but it has to be painful. So, to for this week, maybe we are asked to reflect on this. What are those pains or brokenness in our lives? Perhaps our disappointments, perhaps we have certain weaknesses that we are so frustrated with, maybe we have an addiction, we have a bad habit that we cannot get rid of and it brings us trouble and we end up frustrated. Pero sabi ni St. Paul, embrace them, offer them to the Lord and allow the Lord to enter your lives to show His power and His might in your weaknesses. So maybe daily, no, in the evening, just pray for that grace to offer my weaknesses so that God may display His power and might in my life.